birds and we were walking, we were walking and we all hold on to grandma's coat. And Tommy, my brother, said to me about halfway, George, I am hungry. And I didn't listen to him. So we went a little bit and he said again, George, I'm hungry. And I said to him, Papa, I cannot give you anything because I don't have anything with me. I am sure when taking us, they will give us some food. And don't try to cry here because he's trying to cry. I said, you cannot cry here. We are marching here. And he said, I said, you want some trouble here? And he said, okay, I, I don't cry. <laughs> and he kept quiet. So we went to the ghetto and there was a huge, huge box set up already and we, they get us in line and the Hungarian fascists said every bed of valuables everywhere have to be thrown in, into this box. Our witches and we didn't have anything. But many, many people had rings, heirlooms. So my mother had a bunch of hair here. She didn't have a hairstyle, just a, a buns. And uh, my, I remember grandma opened the bun because somebody ordered her to open. And I believe she had a wedding band there. So she was not brave enough to keep that. She threw that uh, wedding band into the box. And it was very difficult to, to bait. There was no water. Hot water is out of the question. It was winter time. My mother went and gathered the fresh snow and put it in a huge, huge, big uh, pan. But I don't know, you know, there's so much snow have to melt in order to have just this much water. But she did what she could. And I am not ashamed to tell we all bathed in the same water. But my mother felt good, feeling at least my children are washed. And there was a movie was advertised, Baron Münhausen. And that was the first German made colored movie was made. You know, I mean, we, you know, 1944. And there was advertised that Baron Münhausen sits on his big uh, uh, Type, no. ball, you know, the cannonball, you know, was a giant thing. And I was so fascinated with that picture. And I kind of heard about the story. I had to see it. So I sneaked out in a time when you're not supposed to be out. I went to see the movie. And I was scared. Everybody was scared. I was seven years old. And uh, I made that fortunately back. But I remember, I remember seeing people who were not Jewish, you know, or who knew me, but I don't know if they see me, but I, I was pretty scared. Wallenberg House. I, I was in a Wallenberg House. A Swedish protected. Swedish, yeah. And we were, we were in another Swedish protected house, which was, uh, used to be the, I don't know, it's probably not the correct way to say, Deaf and Dumb Institute. I don't know how you say it, otherwise, you know, whatever. And that became a protected house by the Swiss. The Swedish flag was hanging, or a Swiss flag, depending everybody on Everybody had the false uh, papers. I mean, nobody We didn't have did. false papers. No, I, we did. All had, everybody you had, had false, all you, you, false you did. papers. Yeah, yeah. I was so hungry, probably, but I guess you don't feel hungrier then, you know. When you get to a certain stage, I don't remember feeling hungry. And, but I always wanted to eat. My favorite food was, you know what a mako schnudli? You don't need uh, Poppy seed noodles with poppy seed and sugar. It's very, that used to be my favorite. And somehow I remembered how is it made. You know, my mother used to make it from scratch and da da da. And I kind of knew the process and I was telling everybody when we get out of here, we're going to eat this food. I, I want you to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this food, and the way you make it, you put the eggs in it, put the flour, and I was cooking <laughs> in, in imagination. <laughs> and then all the kids were so hungry. <laughs> they were, you know, starving. So they beat me because they wanted me to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and I started to cry. I'm hungry, I'm hungry. I was four and a half years old, I mean, forgive me. 
I'm hungry. And uh, so somebody from the truck, that woman, me, that small kid, come over here. So we, we got the bread, and my mother was so happy that that night we had bread. Well, when we were already in the ghetto, a lot of, um, um, of from other countries like Romania or Czechoslovakia, the labor camp uh, Jews, they were able to escape and they came into the ghetto. So they bring us fresh news and they, then they told us what really happened in Poland and the other countries and the concentration camp. And we knew we were going to go to the concentration camp. But it was close to the end of the war and the Germans did not have time to blow up the ghetto. It was rumors they're going to uh, burn the ghetto down and we are going to burn there and all kind of rumors. But luckily the Russians were close by and they were not able to, to finish that plan. And there were all these wagons standing there and we had to stand there and wait and the sun, you know, the whole bunch, I don't know, probably 10, 20,000 people, children and, and women. And then I remember Wallenberg came by with a car, a limousine, with a few other people. And he was talking to the Hungarian Nazis and the German, the SS, because they, both of them were there. They were going to take us to some one of the camps, I don't know where. Uh, the only story I remember is uh, that right after the war, as soon as the war ended, uh, the one who took care of me, they went to check on the apartment to see Your aunt. everything. My aunt, yeah. And uh, they got hit by a bomb the, the very last day of the war. It was practically over in the front of the house. Mm -hmm. They bought a mother and a daughter, too. And they were going they to. They almost took us with them, mm -hmm. my, me and my sister, because Susie and me. The ghetto was liberated in January 19 by the Russians. And I remember they came through the underground in the bunkers where we were hiding, but everybody was so weak, not eating, we didn't even have desire to eat. Plus, we, we didn't have enough energy to eat. So they said, uh, don't show happiness when the Russians will show up because they are not real Russians. They just camouflage themselves as Russians. The Germans just find, just wanted to find out how happy the Jews are because the Russians are here. So we shouldn't show any joy. And the Russians didn't came in to liberate the Jews. That was part of their their job. We, we thought the Russians strictly came to liberate the Jews. It was not true. It was, uh, it, it was part of the war. Part of the war. So I remember when they came in, a woman went and, and kissed the jacket of, of, of the Russians from, from joy. One day, 